Hi, guys. It is not Maria. Um, it is Kelsey and Kevin today with some amazing guests. You've seen Ashley before. She's back. And we're joined by Brahim. And we're talking all things quilt, quilt. crying. We did cover crying. Yes. Being vulnerable. Social media, the environment. Saving the planet. Anything else? Work-life integration. Yes. Self-care. Yes. So good. So make sure to hit subscribe. Hey everybody, it's Better Together with Maria Menounos. As you can guess, it's Mr. Maria Menounos <laughs> subbing in for my beautiful and talented wife who is uh, on hiatus, but we're very excited today. It's uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, mm -hmm. right Kelsey? That's right it is. And uh, we're going we're gonna to honor that yeah, we are. today. We're going to have some old friends back. Mm -hmm. But without any further ado... I want to turn it over to Kelsey for the quote of the day. Thank you, Kevin. Introduce our guests and our friends as well. That's right. So, without further ado, Miss Kelsey Alexandra Meyer. Wow. Big uh, <laughs> intro there. Thank you, Kev. Our quote of the day, you guys, is what mental health needs is more sunlight, more candor, and more unashamed conversation. That's from the lovely Glenn Close. Glenn Close. Shout out, Glenn Close. Fatal attraction. Glenn Close is not here with us today, but... We have our friend returning, Ashley Sumner, and our new friend, Brahim ah Ahusseini. Great. <laughs> nailed it. I nailed it. So we're really, really excited, you guys. Um, Ashley, as you know, was on with Kev when Kev and I were doing the show for a hot second um, back in Connecticut. She is the CEO and founder of Quilt. Quilt is a self-care audio social network for supportive Real-time conversations built to rehumanize social media with the goal of helping people feel better on a daily basis. And Brahim is a renowned investor and founder of Full Cycle Climate Fund. He's also the managing member of the, yeah, I'm going to ruin your last name again, the Husseini Group. Did I get it? Perfect. Yes. An investment company he started with his family in the early 2000s that invests in socially and environmentally responsible companies. So I'm really excited for this convo today, Kev. Look at you. And by the way, kudos to Kelsey. Did a great Wonderful job. Thanks, job. guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. So, Ash, it's so yeah. good to have both of you in studio. Um, give me an update on Quilt. Let's back up mm. a little bit. Quilt is an app. For anyone who doesn't know, I remember Clubhouse was the thing mm. during the pandemic, yeah. right, with this app. And you could go on Clubhouse and you would hear from other experts and influencers mm -hmm. advice on life. And what I loved about Quilt is like it was similar, except Quilt was just really focused on wellness. Yeah. Am I right with that? Yeah. I mean, Quilt at our core is a wellness company. We just believe that community is the greatest way to feel better. Yes. Like feeling together, laughing together, playing together, creating together. So for <laughs> us, using audio like Clubhouse or Twitter spaces, but creating that environment more for connection and, and less for performance and being on a stage and, you know, sharing what you know more about what you feel. Mm, I love that. And so, Ash, t just tell me, how, how does Quilt work for people out there? I download the app. And then I get on the app and then what? Yeah. So you download the app, you pick certain areas of interest that you want to grow or learn or connect on. So that could be anything like career and purpose, relationships, spirituality, self-care, healing, intimacy. You know, there are some primary categories. And then anyone can host conversations. They're audio only, no video. People can go in, they can non-verbally like participate as a listener or using certain emojis to react, or you can be in speaking. So you can kind of engage in the conversation, ask questions, share your story, express yourself. Um, types of conversations that have been happening, there's been... There's been a rise of conversations actually in the just for fun category. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh, really? Yes, oh, really. It's important. Imagine that. We've all been really like so sad tense and locked for up. two years. Yeah. <laughs> well, it kind of reminds me, Kev started bowling. Yes. Just for fun. Well, that well, is. also. To, but, but it's kind of the same it, idea. No, it's also to connect the synapses in my brain. Okay. Dr. Raymond is, has been a guest mm -hmm. on the show. He's one of the number one brain doctors in the world. And he is, when you have brain damage, yes. one of the things that's good to do is to, you know, create yeah. new 
learning pathways yep, to course. learn new things. He's like, it's not even beca- about being good. He's like, just so. I was, <laughs> no, but I love it. Awesome. I think it's kind of the same idea. I but think. it's fun too. Yeah. But I know. I listen. My whole motto in life is like help people. Be here to help people learn and mm-hmm. and have fun. Have fun. That's it. You know, it's pretty simple. It's so yeah. I love that. So tell me, so so you're seeing an increase in that right now? Yeah, in the past few months, um, almost uh, actually in the past month, seventy percent of our conversations were tagged with just for fun. Wow. People are playing games. People are like hacking the product and you know dra- drawing and submitting photos into their profile. Yeah. They're pulling tarot cards together. They're having. They're having, there's a wine down Wednesday, like Wednesday night on the app is like a party. So cute. Yeah, it's they're, nice. having, they're having fun together. Yeah. And it's been, wow. I mean, we are also very much here for the deep, meaningful conversations, the weekly grief groups, the, like the processing mm-hmm. of feelings. And then also remembering that that can be yesterday and today I can be like joining wine down Wednesday and, <laughs> you know, hanging out with some other human beings around the country giggling. There's, oh, there's also Wacky Whisper Wednesday where everybody just whispers. Stop. <laughs> and like we giggle. For the, I mean, yeah, you just but laugh. That's, oh my God, it's just healthy, you guys. I love this because it's hard to be intense all the time. But I want the two of you to talk about something I I keep hearing in my, you know, I, I hear it in lectures and I've heard it for the last 10 years about all of us being connected. Mm. And I will say like it went in one ear and out the other with me. I was like, yeah, okay, woo woo, whatever. Mm. And now I'm realizing like, oh, we are all connected. But can you, ex- both of you speak to that? Because I know you work with the environment and one of the reasons why is because of that. We're connected mm-hmm. it together. We're connected to the earth. But what I love about Quilt is it is bringing this connection. But even when we don't get along with people or we, you know, we judge other people or talk against other people, like we forget we, we're connected to them too, right? Yeah. Right. So can you guys help me with that? (laughs) Educate educate me on that. Either one of you or both. Yeah. I mean, I I can kick off by saying, um, you know, when I when I was launching Quilt last year, um, a huge inspiration behind that was really in the middle of a pandemic and sheltering in place. Yeah, Yeah. I remember being on social media. And spending, I went from maybe spending 10 minutes a day on social media to hours, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I didn't feel connected to other people. You know, like I, I was processing the, the news and information and feeling anger and feeling isolated and just feeling alone and not connected. Um, and so my, you know, the way I was thinking about Quilt is, can there be a kind space for us, like a kind corner of the internet, can we translate? Please, like, please, <laughs> <laughs> please, <Truly>. pretty please. <laughs> well, and I was thinking, I'm like, technology is amazing, and it's created a lot of efficiency for us. But you know, on-demand delivery, right? Like, yeah. you know, I can buy something; it's on my doorstep an hour later. I never have to make eye contact with a person ever again in an Uber. They're not interacting with you. Yeah. Social media, all of this technology has launched, and we've lost spontaneous, serendipitous human interaction. Mm. Oof. offline, you know, and like so much comes from those moments that you don't plan, but happen for you. Um, and so for, you know, for me, quilt was very much that. And that's actually how, you know, Brahim very spontaneously and serendipitously stumbled a, a, upon quilt in his own way. And that's how we came into each other's lives. Wait, so you so. just, Brahim, you just found it randomly. I read a New York times article that was uh, mm-hmm. mentioning quilt and I like the story and the premise of what Ashley stands was as a founder of the company. So I had respect and admiration for her point of view there, but I, what got me into to become an investor, to have my family become investors is I downloaded the app and you're right. It was at this peak of, um, what's that app called? Uh, Clubhouse. Clubhouse yeah. right. And I downloaded the app and I went into one of these quilts. That's what they call their rooms, quilts. So I went into one of the quilts and I had this really unique experience that I don't remember having in any digital platform, which is I was with eight strangers in a room and I felt like as comfortable as I would have been if I had known these people for 20 years. And it was so surprising to me that when I eventually two hours later had to get off the app for whatever was going on in my schedule that day, I felt 
invigorated and grounded as if something that I was hungry for was satiated, but I didn't know I was hungry for it. And you, you, and I think you nailed it when you said connection. So I felt connected to eight people that I had never met before. And that gave me something that I kept with me the entire rest of that weekend. And I knew that I had stumbled upon something very special. I, I love hearing this from you because first of all, as a male, um, but then also the fact that you are successful in finance, because I feel like sometimes in my experience, the people and the men who've been conquerors in that area have been, have had an aversion to this kind of stuff. You know, it's like, like I would hear it's very 20th century, but I hear from a lot of friends on wall street and business. They say, Hey, business is a full contact sport and they have that mentality. So I love that you, um, it's just inspiring to me that someone as successful as you, who's probably had to go play in that full contact sport game. doesn't mean you played full contact against them, but you had a, I'll take it to football. You had to be Deion Sanders. You had to be fast, and, yeah. right, and, and work around them. And I know those businessmen too, but I, I just, I really admire that. And I, I'm hoping that, and, I, and I'm pretty sure with Quilt and also with the new generation coming up, that they'll understand the balance between, you know, you want making money, being successful, but then also still realizing we're connected. Mm. And, you know, and like for you to, again, I, I will stereotype, but I will say like a lot of my super successful male friends in finance, the last thing they'd want is seven strangers on um, <laughs> Quilt. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Their friends are like, oh, he owns Pinkberry yogurt and he is <laughs> was the first investor in Google. Like yeah. I'm saying, when I'm around them, their posse is usually all other powerful men and women. Mm. I think that's just wonderful about you. It says a lot about you, but, but I also think it does open the door for more people to say, oh, wait, it's okay to be mm-hmm. successful, but then also to know we're connected. Yeah. Right? Because you, yeah. you, I can already, you're going to answer this the right way because I can already tell. But you know you can't take it with you anyway, <laughs> right? It's all on loan, all of this. Yeah. 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 And um, I, you know, I admittedly have never been that stereotype that you mentioned, partially because, you know, I grew up. Is it know, an Im- as, immigrant, you think? Yeah, I grew up as an immigrant, so I already felt the kind of burden of being a second-class citizen. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a sensitivity that yes. comes from having a feeling the you know the highs and lows that life can throw at mm-hmm. us so as but sometimes you know, it can make you hard and go the other way fair so people who yeah. are low vibrating you know and again no judgment to them but who are the immigrants and they got crapped on now they're they're hard and they're like i'm not giving anything no one gave anything to me so i think it's mm-hmm. beautiful that you took it but please continue yeah so i think that you know that kind of framed my point of view on life and on people that hey you know it's a you know it's like it gave me a specific sensitivity. So for example, like my relationship to capital isn't a power over, but it is true partnership. Like you bring something to the table. I bring something to the table. One plus one equals three. We both get to create something powerful together in the world and reap the financial rewards from that uh, um, exponential uh, uh, multiplier that we bring when we come together. And, you know, if it's, like another point of view beyond being an immigrant is I was a scuba diver. So, you know, the, this whole notion of investing in climate technology came because I went scuba diving in the same spot year after year for a decade. And I saw the degradation in the quality of marine life firsthand. Mm. So, you know, something that was stunningly lush and beautiful and full of life became barren and full of plastic within a decade. And the oceans are kind of the canary in the proverbial climate coal mine. That's right. And now we see it above ground with the fires and the droughts and everything that's happening. But before that, it was underneath the surface of the water. So I literally, and I was already a very successful individual at that point. And I walked out of the water that day, like a deer in the headlights yeah. thinking like, what is the point of becoming wealthy and continuing to accumulate wealth on a planet that's slowly dying? Ooh. That actually, correction, that we are killing yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be, part- I don't want to participate in that because the things no. that I value the most in the world are not things that you can buy with money. Mm. 
there are the other things. Like we yeah. were, you know, you were snuggling with the, the puppy earlier. You yeah. can't buy that with money. That's a relationship. Yeah. Mm. You know, the our relationship with a breathtaking vista or the wonderment of, you know, of having a, a whale shark just come kind of swim by you while you're underneath the water and have your whole being just freeze because you're you're so delighted and so enthralled and terrified <laughs> at the same time. You know, all at the same time. It's like, you can't buy that. You can't buy it. It's funny. So one, this week I had a meeting with somebody and I don't know, business was over. So we just started just, you know, shooting the breeze. And he said his life changed when someone ran this situation by him and said to him, Hey, um, I'll give you $10 million right now, but there's one catch. Today is your last day on the planet. <laughs> and something about that really made him go, wait, wait, what? Like, so 10 million, so, okay, I'll give you a hundred million. No. So when you really start thinking about like, you wouldn't take any amount of money, but yet you're fighting every day for that when you already have that in a sense, you know, and um, yeah, I think for some of the like hungry capitalists out there, uh, I have empathy for you as well, but I, but, and maybe you don't have to be the one to say, okay, I'm going to change the world. I think that you have a, we all have a responsibility to each other, but I, but I think, you know, the smart thing you could do is say, Hey, okay, well, there's a need here, right? Mm. So there's a service you can provide somehow. It's, I don't know how to do it, but I'm saying with the environment, decaying hey if you're if you're okay you, how do you mm. fill that need and make a win-win mm -hmm. you know and rather than being contributing to the problem yeah which is going to be which is all of our problem now and it's for our generations to come but um but we're also like we are victims of marketing too no we're not yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know i, I want to put it out there because you know three thousand i think it's three thousand ads a day we see or some some number or used to be and now it's yeah. far more yeah. from the internet Continue, we have, please. We have, I mean, because we're on Better Together, we're talking about healing. Like, that's mm -hmm. what everybody cares about here. Yeah. Like, we have all been told that if we just reach this place, buy oh, this thing, yes. do Everything this Everything will thing, be we'll amazing. Be, we'll feel better. Everything yeah. will be amazing. Right. And just so, buy, make that one purchase on Amazon. And all of those things put you further great. into debt, put, mm -hmm. pulls you further away from like being at your dinner table with your family, with making right. eye contact, having serendipitous interactions. So, you know, it's, that's like the society that we are in. And I think the reckoning that we're also in because, you know, social media certainly exacerbated the capacity for marketing, right? It, it took it from just like on the television to all day long, we are being told, if you just got this yeah. thing, you'll feel better. Yes. And it's instantaneous. I mean, look at Instagram. I literally buy stuff from Instagram all the time. Well, it's horrible. But, and then, and then, it's but horrible. it's also even, even the fight for likes, yeah. you know, and yeah. comments and all yeah. that stuff. It's... um. We think that's going to fill. When we were, yeah. I was, yeah. we visited Fiji one time mm. and there was a big, um, I don't know, hotel that was there. Oh, Bora Bora. And there was a really beautiful hotel that was there and we were staying at, and lo you know, very blessed to be able to do that. And right next door was a family of natives mm. that, you know, that lived there. And every morning I would see, they had one boat. It was a very small boat and had a little tiny gas engine on it. But it would go out every day, and they would come back and filled with coconuts and fish. Mm. And um, you know, again, this is my 20th century brain at work. This was 10, 12 <laughs> years ago, so I wanted to talk to them. I'm a history major, so I love people and I mm -hmm. love learning. So I was talking to them. So my mind went into, "Listen, <laughs> you're right next to this beautiful hotel. Do you understand the money you could be making? Like, all right, let's figure this out." And they, <laughs> and they just looked at me like, "What planet are you from?" And it was amazing. They're like. No, we don't want We're that. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, but what do you mean? Like, don't you want to be fat like me? Yeah. <laughs> no, but they were all like, they were just so happy. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah. you know, and it, I had to now years later, I processed that conversation and I realized like, oh my God, like they have it right. That's power. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, more, better, <laughs> more. more. But yeah, that's, that's, that's the darker side of uh, capitalism, you know, that, uh, you know, we do need some kind of new government to come up 
you know, I don't agree with communism, you know, either. Like, I don't think that's right. That's been a proven fail in my opinion, but we need it. We need to evolve to, I say conscious capitalism, but there's going to be a better even name for it. Mm. Um, but I love where, again, these are the guys like you, yeah. Bahim, this is the, you are the ones that can lead this and are leading it and your generation too, Ash and what you're doing at Quilt. Yeah. I mean, after he had that conversation, um, he found me on Facebook and sent me a message that was just like, no, I, I don't. I love this. I know. Wow. Oh, I know. Tell I know. me. Tell me. <laughs> and I, was, it, it, I forget exactly the language. To paraphrase, it was like, um, I was on quilt <laughs> for hours. I have no idea what just happened, but if there's anything that I can do wow. to support you, any like any you know, contacts, resources, wow. conversation, like I am here to support this mission. Like I see what can happen with it. Ooh. That's crazy. Right, and it turned, in, yeah. turned into a like a Sunday seven a.m hours of, of a phone call really talking about the vision of quilt. Wow. And so, yeah, for somebody to have that type of, that type of awareness and uh, connection to the experience, but also the capital and desire to be, I mean, there, there's a generosity to just reach yeah. out that I'd never experienced before. Super well, it's good. Go ahead, go ahead, please. I mean, it's relatively self-serving, right? Because when you experience a platform that can, I think you said it, uh, very well, you know, help us live in a kinder world. You know, I live in that world. Mm -hmm. I want that world. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, you know, I don't want uh, people to suffer because marketing told them that they're not enough. And the only way for them to ever become enough is to buy more things. And of course, that's, that's the insidiousness of that whole industry is basically to cut you and then tr sell you the bandaid and then cut you again and sell you the next bandaid. <laughs> and, <laughs> It's so a, yeah, is the, you know, and what we're actually trying to fill is that loneliness, is that insecurity, right. is that feeling of less than that is an example of an unfettered version of capitalism that is forcing us to be in this never ending cycle of consumption to try to fill this bucket with with this drilled hole in it that they put in there. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, what you're doing here, just even having this conversation and hosting this conversation is allowing everybody who's listening to just wake up from that spell. Wake up from that spell. Mm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It is a spell. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I was saying this yesterday to someone else too, how the term woke Mm. has just had so much toxicity now attached to it from people, you know, and from probably people with this mentality, right, that we're talking about. But I, I, um, I advocate for people to move away from woke to awakened and awakening. Mm -hmm. And so awaken from the spell, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that we've all been under. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, that, that, that whole movement, it's, you know, it's uh, the reason why it's so aggressive is because it's pent up uh, yes. persecution for yes. so long. For so, it's just like, you know, yeah, you're like, okay, no, what? Yeah. You, go, you know, like you're ready to snap, uh, yeah, 100%. E exactly. That's it's, what happened, you know, whatever, with the all the protests. It's just mm -hmm. people just yeah. had mm -hmm. enough, enough and they just snap. Yeah, and they have the, you know, of course they snapped. It's been so long. Yeah. Like the system has been uh, oppressing so many people for so long that this, like this little window of exhale allowed a universal scream to come out That's and really it's it still, mm -hmm. yeah. it's still making its way rever rever reverberating through the world and it has a long way to go, but at least we're now starting to tease out what's in yeah. that scream and starting to look at the little pieces of it and start to hopefully help you know, well, the, I think it's education, which is what quote, what you're doing. Correct. And mm -hmm. by the way, just to say, wake up from the spell. Like I always say, sometimes like one quote will just change your life. Mm -hmm. You know, Maria's like, uh, Tony Robbins, life is happening for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. That got Maria, my wife, through her brain thing. She's mm -hmm. kept going back to that, no mm -hmm. matter how bad the news was about her mm -hmm. mom or this or that. And just to hear that now, that just really affected me. Like, mm -hmm. wait, we are in her spell. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, after the, the screaming, if we could get continue to educate yeah. people to let them know you've been under a spell. Yeah. And I understand yeah. why you're upset, yeah. but you've been under a spell, yeah. but you have it within you now yeah. to wake up. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
Sil- silence uh, usually comes from, you know, shame and fear. And I think protesting is an act of community coming together and, you know, roaring together. Yeah. But it's a community act to find your voice and to believe you can use it, right. you know, whatever that looks like. And then what comes on the other side of that, right, is there's a processing of those feelings. And then there's like a groundedness of like, what does it look like to be in action? You know, once I'm feeling better about processing the grief that I've been kind of bucketing backwards for so long, what do we ultimately end up doing? Like we come together, we feel better, and then we get to do good. Hopefully the idea is that we can ultimately end up doing good together too. I, I do want to say, uh, just in kind of tipping my hat to you, Ashley, is the the people who go on to quilt um, leave with because I've had this experience with a certain feeling of satisfaction. Mm. That's I think something that's missing is you know the the satisfaction of connection mm. that makes us you know like. The, you know, if you think about the visual of the person who is continuing to eat because they're trying to be satisfied, yeah. but yeah. they can't yeah. get satisfied because right. there's not enough nutrition in that food in the mm. first place. Mm-hmm. Like you said, with they, consumerism too, you're buying things, buying things, right. but you never fill that void. But with when you have human connection mm. yeah. and you really have these great mm. exchanges, mm. it's different. And you have mm. that. I love that you guys have that over at Quilt. And I, I say 21st century is going to be the century of mental health. Mm-hmm. Has to be because of where we've just gotten yeah. between social media and um, everything else we talked about. Yeah, yeah. It's um, uh, apparently on quilt. I just kept saying crying is cool, mm. <laughs> and then I started putting it on swag. My favorite. Hat. Right. No, this is <laughs> it. Yeah. Let's. Hat. Okay. So you guys, let's take a quick break. Yeah. And we come back. I want to talk about crying is cool. Awesome. I want to talk about the fact that your male membership is like drastically Huge. increased, yeah. So yeah. which is really positive. I want to talk yeah. about the age groups and some of the subjects you're going over. Yeah, cool. And then I know you did some work. You read Dr. Joe Dispenza's book. Our yeah. fan base loves yeah. uh, Dr. Joe. Maria's uh, done so much work and, you know, with them. So I, uh, th- yeah, there's, there's a lot here. Okay, you guys, we'll be right back. Okay, you guys, crying is cool. Sure it is. And by the sure way, the older is. I get, I, the more I just cry on a dime now. And I grew up with a dad; I never even saw him cry. Yeah. He was slapped in the face, I think, at six, and then he was told never to cry again. He never yeah. did. And then Oof. when he was diagnosed with cancer, he like that was one time he bawled his eyes out. My mom said, but that was it. <laughs> but now I don't, you know, like <laughs> just everything. Just, mm-hmm. but I think it feels good. <laughs> I hate oh, it to say does it. Feel, I mean, right? I, it's cr- such a I cry a lot. So. I cry a lot. <laughs> it's hard though. It's very hard to be vulnerable. Like I cry a lot. Crying is kind of my mo, but I will not cry in front of anyone. You know, I see Kelsey fighting back, and I'll say, "Kels, <laughs> yeah, it's okay to cry." Yeah. And then I've had I've had other people cry about their careers in our, in Hollywood, not going. I know yeah. you think I'm crazy for crying. I go, no, I would think you were crazy for not crying. We're it's your dream. Funny, I understand. It's like, how did we get there to think that like crying is crazy? We're right? always qualifying our tears, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hit. I hit mine. Qualifying our tears. I hit. We mine. qualify a lot of things. We do. And the tears. Okay. We go do. Ahead. I mean, continue though, please. I, something I something will always I will always say, which is another example, which is like, if that makes sense. Like I'm always kind of qualifying yes. with my language. Like if that makes sense as if I might mo- not make sense. Right. Like we have these like ways of communicating because we're searching for these moments of connection and crying is like one of the most vulnerable things you can do with another person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, growing up for me, I was raised by a single mom, a very, mm-hmm. very strong woman. She went through so much and I saw her cry a couple of times and she was so ashamed. <gasps> Oh, she heavy. didn't want to cry for Poor her. thing. You know, and so is I, she still with us, Ash? She is. Thank yeah. goodness. She must yeah. be so proud of you. I think so. Well, look, I'm Aww. sure. Well, look what yeah. she created. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes, you know, we have to understand, and I know, I'm sure, bringing with you too, with your family, I'm sure they went through a lot of hardship to give you both what you have now. You know, of Maria's course. parents, same thing. Of course. And sometimes they had to be that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I even have empathy for them not yeah. crying because yeah. they had to be had to hold it together, of course. right? And you, you know, you wouldn't talk about being in but, therapy like people are like trading therapists now, and you know, yeah. there's public platforms no, back for then, it. But you wouldn't. She had to do what she had to do to get you where you are, which is at an amazing place. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I, I thank God I my, lost my dad 30 years ago, but he always said he's like, no, you're, you know, it's okay for you to do this because no, you're 
you're supposed to be better. Like I, yeah. I didn't have education. Yeah. I didn't have, you got that stuff from yeah. me. So you're going to be better than me. Yeah. So you, yes, you, you cry. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. do the things that go against stereotypes, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, I, um, I have proudly been in, in therapy for 20 years. Like I was in my wow. teens and I went to my mom and I said, I am feeling a lot of feelings. I need to go to therapy. And mm. I, How you know, where as a teenager, oh my yeah. gosh, I, you know, and I understand the Ash, privilege. Where did you of grow up? I'm sorry. Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like small, rural. Small, small town. Okay. Yeah. Like Continue. an hour and a half outside of New York city. Go ahead. You know, and you know, she was in a place financially to like be able to support me in doing that, which is Again, such a mom was strong. Such a privilege. she was a bad bee, as Kelsey would say. <laughs> she worked every minute of every day. She made every lunch meal. She dropped me off and picked me up. Like wow. she was, su- she was superwoman. Um, and so, the luxury of being able to go to therapy at a really young age is to learn how to process feelings. But it also unfortunately taught me that that's where I process my feelings. Ooh, so only there. I, yeah, I, so I, yeah. if I have tears that are coming up, you know, in a boardroom or an office or cause I'm excited about something or I feel rejected about something, I built this habit until my twenties where I would go hide to cry bathroom stalls in my car, in my, in a Welcome stairwell. Welcome to Hollywood. I can't tell you how many people my tears. would say, yeah, I go to the bathroom wow. and cry. I'm like, over, in my over tears. what? Right. Adult make believe. What are we talking about? <laughs> and not the shame on the people crying. I know the mofos who are making them cry. cry. I would cry too or yeah. punch them in the face. Yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, these sensitivities. <laughs> Sorry, Kelsey. No, it's true. It, it's, um, I had another therapist in my late twenties ask me, I was sharing a story about, about going and hiding and crying. And I thought, you know, she was going to be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry for that experience, which she was very empathic towards. But she asked me, she's like, do you always hide before you express your feelings? And I was like, oh my God. I mean, it was a moment. It was a moment. And I was like, I do. Wow. Do you I always, don't... wait, this is so great for people yeah. here. Do you always hide before you express your feelings? Yeah. I think so many of us do that. And we hide in different ways. Okay. Oh, so yeah. continue. We hide it. We, I walked out of there and just started realizing that, you know, when people ask me the question, how do you feel? I usually answer with how I think about something. Like I, I actually couldn't Ooh. answer the question. I feel sad. I'm, I'm grieving. I'm excited. I'm like, I'm this, 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 and this feeling all at one time that, that feelings color wheel. I ended up printing it and putting it in, in my bedroom and just like starting to look at it to really connect with actually how am I feeling right now? Um, and that was a really big moment for me, um, clearly in years later launching Quilt because all of a sudden all of the feelings just started that were suppressed started coming up. I, I'm wow. going to back up a little bit. So one, I always say to Kels when I get to, you know, um, host the show for Maria and we have all these super successful people like you guys come in mm-hmm. and it's wonderful to learn. The one, I would say the one thing that you all have mm. that Kelsey and I don't. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> no, no, We're no. working We're on working it. On it. <laughs> I, work, I'm being self-deprecating. I'm sorry. Um, is I always say this oh, heightened awareness. Mm. So Brahim, you are in the ocean and you say, wait, why mm. are there all plastic balls here when there's this beautiful ecosystem? Mm. And you say at a young age, like, I don't, I need to go to therapy. Mm. It's wild. But, and so I commend you for having that, but mm. I think we can all have that, but we're moving so fast, right? Mm. We're consuming, we're consuming. It's every, but I think for everybody, if you can just raise your awareness mm. and take the temperature of what's going on around you, your body, you know, I mm-hmm. think, but that's the one thing that I see with super successful, high vibrating people is this, this increased awareness, which also hurts too, to have that awareness. I know mm. that that can be painful mm. as well. Um, but I think that is something we can control. I don't yeah. think you have to be the smartest or, you know, I understand when you don't have means and like I'm dealing with someone right now who's got cancer and is bankrupt and is, has children. And there's not even time yeah. to have awareness, yeah, you know, and, no and I am, my heart just goes out to any of you who's in that situation. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you can just please get out to nature for 20 minutes and you know what I mean? Just yeah. breathe. But it's that awareness. I mm. see that in both you guys and um, mm. it's, 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 it's commendable. Mm. And I think uh, it's, uh, I do think it's attainable though for more of us. We just, again, if we could just get off, uh, you know, Amazon or Truly. whatever we're binge watching or just for a minute to go, okay, what's, what's Pause. going around, what's going on around me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We can, we connect in our awareness too. I think it's one of the, one of the best ways to bond with another person is by just not being or not feeling like you need to be a know-it-all, but just, 
sharing like what you're aware of, what you're not aware of, what you're feeling, like really coming from a place more so of curiosity than of, of judgment. Curiosity. Yeah. 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 I mean, I get curious, you know, like that's, I remember a therapist told me that too, rather than stress, be, be curious, you know, just be yeah. wonder. Curious. That was her big thing. It's either Kendall, my, who's my like sensei, but she's always like, no, no, mm. no, don't worry. Wonder. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I love that. Yep. And turn so, your worry into wonder. wonder. My mom says that. Look your mom that. is amazing. She is. We need to talk to your mom yeah, at some we'll point. We do. Uh, no, no. By the way, in, in your family too, because I've always been fascinated. When you know, I've met, I have a lot of celebrity friends, a lot of super successful friends, and the one thing is one of the few times I get to meet the parents. Yeah. I want to get in the parents' head. Like, what did you do? <laughs> and sometimes, listen. Sometimes you have a kid who's just, you know, even Maria's parents are like from. She walked at like eight months yeah. and she never wanted to be in our arms. She was just go, 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 be a doer. You know, yeah. like I understand certain kids are just born that way, but the parents definitely instilled certain principles in her. And I'm really oh, yeah. fascinated with that. And also I'd like to learn. Mm. And I think a lot of other parents can learn. Mm. But your mom, I mean, that's just, you know, and I think probably with you, unfortunately, seeing her not be able to feel, just have to keep working, keep providing. That's probably transcended down to you. But your body was like, wait, no, that's yeah. next generation's like, eh, you know yeah. what? That doesn't work yeah. for me. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I just couldn't, um, I'm an empath. So my desire to go, 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 like my health stopped me. You know, I would have just kept yes. going. I would have just yes. kept going. Trust okay, me. Okay, <laughs> so yes, and, and I tell you, I always say the wheels will come off the wagon at some point. Uh, Maria with a tumor. Mm-hmm, I have yep. Hashimoto's yeah. and like mold poison and like yep. a million things going on in my body right now. Yep. Same thing. Yep. Person I'm just dealing with right now, with breast cancer, but it's yep. not a coincidence. It's just all of it. So tell me, health wise, everything just mm-hmm. kind of came down on you. Yeah, and, I mean, and take us from there. Our systems shut down, you know, like we will be forced. Our bodies. Yeah. 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 We will be forced to rest, you know, mm-hmm. if we don't do it for ourselves. And I, I, this is my pattern. I've learned this lesson a few times. I have had a 15 year journey of body aches and pains and kind of random things or mystery things that would come up that would just slow me right down. Yeah. Um, and that's usually the time where I'm like, okay, what is the lesson here? Let's go even deeper. Let's quiet everything outside of ourselves. It's go even deeper internally. Internally. And so what about all the work, you know, the work you're doing for your business, your career, whatever at that moment, what do you do? You know, I still, um, I'm still type A and I still manage like it all. Um, but I, I, like one of the biggest things I'm doing right now is improving my sleep. Me too, girl. My aura ring has changed no, my life. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> listen, seriously though. The best natural medicine in the world to me Kevin is sleep. Kevin always says it. Yeah. Best natural medicine, yeah. whether it's a cold, even a broken bone. But sleep, we always put it just last. Just sleep. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, we can sacrifice yeah. sleep. But, but back up, Ash, what, what was, wasn't there one where the wheels really came off the yeah. wagon? Mm. Yeah. In 2015, um, I got into an accident and had a brain injury. Mm. Um, and I was living in New York City at the time. I was like, probably the most social person anyone has ever met, you know, like my identity was very much wrapped up in, you know, the people that I knew and how I was helping them and connecting them. I was a matchmaker. I was a community yeah, builder. Right. Okay. We talked I about remember. that the last yeah. time and I was All go, great go, go. skills to pick up, but yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, if you looked at my calendar, I took Mondays off, but I would have four events every night and I would make all four? of them in New York city. Oh my God. So I'd be at each for 20 minutes. Traveling. And then such a drain, I mean, because so many people. Everything. And you're an empath, so you've soaked up everyone's energy. So- I, I had no idea. Yeah. And you can't even necessarily be yourself because you're in sales mode. Oh, no. You're I being was, everything for everyone else. I was a, I was a, a really friendly robot, <laughs> you know, oh my gosh. Um, in, in so many ways. And then all of a sudden I got into an accident and mm. I, uh, I hurt this thing in my head here, this brain, um, and was forced to really slow down. Like, you know, I, I was sleeping 18 hours a day. I was in bed. New York was too stimulating. So yeah, too I came frenetic. to LA mm-hmm. 
my brother, who's uh, one of the most interesting people, I think, on the planet um, and has had such a fascinating journey, everything from being a digital artist and a poet to real estate to er probably the earliest person I ever knew in crypto to going to Peru and developing shamanic Again, practices. Yeah, I'm going back to mom. Like, I'm going back to mom for yeah, raising this she, team. She really made everything possible for us. Um, and he sent me a message. He was in Peru and he was like... Um, have you heard of the man Joe Dispenza? Mm. And I was like, no, but I have so much time on my hands right now because <laughs> I'm just laying here. And he's like, download, you know, the audible or the audio because I couldn't read. I couldn't retain, you know, anything mm -hmm. I was reading, uh, breaking the habit of being yourself and let me know what you think. Uh, and I, I listened to all of it and I just realized that like my mindfulness practice is going to be the only way that I'm going to get through this, that I'm going to heal like it's no longer okay for me to not listen to my inner voice. Mm. I've been so intuitive my whole life, but I've been ignoring it, thinking it, that's like, that's not the thing. I've been overdriving and going towards yeah. the shiny yeah. object. Yeah, That's not what's going to happen anymore. And I changed everything about my life. Um, I mean, some, some of it because I had to, you know, cause I couldn't really like walking was hard. Wow. Um, but I gained like who I am as a result of it. So two years, two years later is really like when I kind of came out of the woodworks and started exploring what it might mean to build a community where people could come together and heal together. So, you know, what I love is you're serving your needs, right? You, you're, you're still uh, inside of you. You still have a motor, you're an ass kicker. You want to build something cool, but like you're doing with the environment, it's like you're doing something positive, but you're also getting, you know, it's funny. I, I, I remember a yogi friend of mine, was working with Yogi Cameron actually. And I, I had a friend from home who was really in a bad way and Yogi Cameron was helping her and um, she ended up breaking her ankle, you know, and she was, mm. she was always running marathons, but at the same time, single mom, was a widow, had four kids that she supported on her own, like two businesses and she's running marathons. And I'm like, honey, you gotta slow down. And um, he said to me, you know, Kevin, I don't think the broken ankle is a coincidence. He's like, I think that is the universe breaking her foot to stop mm -hmm. running, not just running the marathon, but running from life. Mm -hmm. And I believe that accident, yeah. that's my personal belief, is the universe. Yeah. So sometimes it's like you could get the jolt of, now you have Hajimoto's. And then that leads into, you know, some other kind of thing and some other kind of thing and eventually cancer. And that's, you can get that too. But I think sometimes the universe steps in yeah. and yeah. there's the, the accident and says time to stop. I want some of our older females um, listening to the show. And by the way, you know what's really cool about our show breakdown mm -hmm. is Marie was showing me the, uh, we, we are the demo. same, the demo is same in all the age, age groups. Great. Wow. Yeah, all the four age oh, groups. It's about the you know twenty percent of each, which is really incredible. So th I that forget that's Maria and Kelsey and Pooja. But um, but I want to say because the older generation, Ash is like, you know, for me, <laughs> be like have a bagel, and eat a diet, you know, drink a diet coke and have a bagel, and move <laughs> on. But the older ge you know generation yeah. of women is just press on. Yeah. More coffee. Yeah. More wine at yeah. night, you know, yeah. to calm myself. More pills, like yeah. whatever it is, yeah. but to push on, yeah. push on. I yeah. still have to be there. Mm -hmm. And like I had a, a friend, older friend, um, some of us my age, you know, females say to me, we're on a board together. And she was uh, saying, you know, I'm really trying to listen to my body and I'm trying to create boundaries mm -hmm. and I'm trying. She's like, but I'm getting like, a, I'm getting attacked from people around me. Yeah. It's not working. Out. She's like, it's not really working out for me because I'm getting a lot of people like, no, you can do it. And she's like, no, I, I really just want to. And they're shaming yeah. her. Oh, yeah. Right. And especially for women, I feel like you yeah. guys get such shame. So You're not shame. enough of a mom or enough of a wife or enough of an earner or enough of a this or enough of a that. Right. Yeah. I mean, identity is um, we're all wrapped up inside of our identities. And I think every level there's a new devil. Right, that's a uh, every I, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's you, that's yeah. Nicole Levant. Yeah, is it? Nicole Levant said that. Oh, I didn't when realize we that. Show. We love yeah. her. Yes, yeah. I love that. New, yeah, she would say she has new levels, new devils. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I mean, no matter what direction we're going in, if we are increasing our frequency and raising our vibration, and we're committing to doing the work, like that's not easy. 
right? And you're going to have a lot of dissonance and friction and frustration and competition and jealousy. Every time you're evolving, there's going to be people that are going to try to pull you down. Try to pull Who you is down. it? Was it Erin Brockovich who was on the show? And she said, it's like football. Yes, the one yard. She's like, yeah, you yeah, got to, yeah. and again, see 20th century mentality. She's totally. like, it's like football and someone's going to always be trying to stop you from getting over the goal yeah. line. Mm-hmm. I like your yeah. Metaphor better. <laughs> well, the reason I like, I mean, the reason I can but see the similar. positive in being forced to slow down is like, if we can actually just trust our own life, have a relationship with our own intuition, mm-hmm. you know, tune out what everybody is saying, whether it's like your family or your friends or on social media or on the news and just develop like a relationship with your inner voice, then sometimes people are going to say those things and it doesn't matter. So, so yeah. let, let's explain that, right? Yeah. That's a look a little bit above my regular guy status. So, <laughs> but so your how, how do I develop or we develop a relationship with our inner voice? I mean, I talk to myself all day long. Um, Out for, loud. Yeah, but a lot of us don't say nice things to ourselves. I know I don't. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah. You know what I mean, I know a lot of the women I know who listen are on our heel squad don't. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always again, you're not yeah. enough. You did this wrong. You did that yeah. wrong. I mean, my discomfort has always been in stillness. Um, I go, go, go. I do, do, do. My, my addiction is work. I'm a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to taking care of myself. I'm, uh, like I'm addicted to the idea of moderation and not going one way or the other. Like we all have addictions, whether it is addicted to moderation. Yeah. I'm addicted to it. I'm so obsessed with not going too far in one. Oh, oh yeah. Right. It's control. Yes. Uh, oh. At the heart of it is, is you know, this desire to control because for me, that's what feels safe. Yes. So always doing, always going, always thinking, always feeling, always anything doesn't actually allow your nervous system to just chill, slow <laughs> yeah. down. And if we slow down, like those voices come through. Mm. I'll add one more thing. Yeah. And sometimes if people go, they don't want to hear the voices, but let me add this that might be, make it more aspirational. Brahim, I'm going to go to you because I bet you anything you're going to agree with me that I find that if, and I'll say this to you, Ashley, you probably already know this, but I want to just remind you. Um, when I look back at, you know, when you guys came in the studio, you saw Maria, you see best selling books, you see she wrestled, she yeah. starred in movies, she hosted every show, she reported for net nightly news. Like, there's not a thing in this business Maria hasn't done other than singing. Yeah. She or sang music. At Eurovision, so. She did sing at Eurovision. <laughs> that's right. Um, but uh, so again, yeah, she there's but when I look back, you know, it was like for me, it was seven days a week. Mm, yeah. And it was just in between the toxicity she dealt with as a female in the business, the only solution I had was let's work harder. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. Like, well, we'll outwork them. Yeah. That's it. I'll just, we're just going to get you big in other areas. Yeah. So you won't need them and you'll end up here. And while I'm grateful that we got here and we made it through, I will say that probably could have worked about 30% less and we would have had the same results, maybe even more. Mm. And what I've learned, and I'm trying to coach some of the younger people for my company, unfortunately, like Roxy, who's been with me since she was 18, now she's 30, and she still has the motor I put in her. Yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Rox, if you can just back up a little bit and breathe, yeah. more will come. Yeah. Success-wise, Brian, can you speak to that? Because I'm finding that now. The less I'm doing, yeah. mm-hmm. the more I'm sitting back more stuff's happening. Mm. Whereas before it was like, again, 20th century, will, will fight more. Got to work harder. Got to, every, I'm not working hard enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not filling enough buckets. Reem, can you speak to this? Does this make sense to you? So I'm trying to reflect on how, you know, what my journey, um, uh, how my journey relates to this. And the, the notion of uh, working hard, I think is a, is a is built into american culture yeah and it's a and it's a little confusing right because it's a you know the hardest working people in the u.s are the people who actually get paid the least (laughs) and so it's it's another one of those you know like fallacies not that that means we shouldn't work hard but you know like it's about um, 
that this promise that if you do these things, you will get this outcome has um, is a much is a much simpler version than the actual truth, which is you know working hard it does not equal success does not equal freedom it just equals time for money and time for money and time for money mm-hmm. and unfortunately going back to this notion of unfettered capitalism you know the minimum wage has been the same since 2007 i mean the the value of money that's like the- when i've sat with people and tried to say let's just do the math like for the minimum wage how is this Person, and you know what I've literally had people say to me, like very well, people be like, they're, they're focusing and whatever on how this hourly wage is somehow going to pay for rent. And like, and literally, this is the last time I brought up with somebody. The, the response was, I don't want to think about the same words depressing me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do believe in hard work because I think it's good for our soul. However, hard work constantly and hard work and nothing but hard work. Well, and hard work ignoring. I don't think if I think you down. it will pay yeah. more for you yeah. to step back, be still, be aware, engage in self care. I I think there's more success, Ashley, for you. The more you breathe, mm-hmm. the more like my, my wife. The more she's stepping back. Yeah. If this were five years ago, guys, there's no way I'd be sitting here. No way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you guys be here and not with Maria? Mm-hmm. No way. Mm-hmm. And. But the more she's letting go, yeah. the more that's coming in. Mm-hmm. And then even with stuff coming in, she's like, no, uh, that's, I'm, I'm not feeling that. Mm-hmm. You know, her whole thing is like, it's either has to serve purpose for me or be fun or I'm out. Yeah. You know? Purpose is a really important part of... Like, right. When I, I don't feel like I'm working. Yeah, you don't. Also such a privilege, right? Like, yes. I, I really understand that and... I was a horrible employee working for someone else when I was just not connected to the purpose of the thing, Mm. you know, and like I could sell ice to an Eskimo if I really believed in it. But the moment that I stopped believing in the thing, can't do it. Like everything was shut down. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a beautiful opportunity to be able to work in something that is part of your, you feel like part of your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt I was born kind of understanding my purpose and people are like, how'd you find your purpose? I'm like, it's kind of just been inside of me, you know, but... I'm going to go back to mom. Alluvia. <laughs> no, and also... The, of I course, think the, yeah. But also these... No, no. I also think your generation is more evolved and more sensitive and more empathetic. Again, an older healer told me this, like, no, yeah. the new... Like 20 years ago. In fact, I had a paraplegic, uh, quadriplegic poodle. And so I'd go to this pet store and there was this lady who worked there and she was a Reiki healer, but she was selling dog food. She just worked there because she loved animals. Yeah. And we said, like, what's wrong with your dog? Oh, can't walk. Anyway, we ended up forming a friendship and she was saying, no, no, this generation coming up is far more, they have different senses, mm. a different dimension of senses you're going to see. And I remember being again like, yeah, okay, whatever lady. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And now I'm like... You know, so I think mm. it's just, there's a different wiring. Now, if that wiring isn't uh, nurtured properly, well, we see the craziness of your generation too. Yeah. But when it is nurtured properly with like your people, like your mom, you mm. see what you get, yeah. you know? But yeah, I think there's a different sensitivity level, empathy level, all that stuff, well, which I think at, is great. Look at all of, I mean, we're in... You might be able to speak more to this than I can, Brahim, but I keep reading the headlines of the mass exodus of people at their jobs. Oh my gosh. People yeah. just... You guys... They're like out. There's no by. one... No one... Yeah. Did you, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to say it because I don't want to hurt air travel, but all the flights being canceled because they have no staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people have just decided, like, are done, you know, with, with COVID, like... It's not worth it. We're leaving the, or, or these urban cities. We're not going to pay mm-hmm. these prices. We're going to go have like a home in yeah. Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. My mom's a realtor there. She's never been right. busier. Okay. I Give mom like my no, I'm, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> all the millennials just want to be happy. They're like, I don't care. I just want to be happy. I, I, yeah. Them. You know, when I was at, we were in Amsterdam for something with MTV about six months ago. And, um, you know, over there, they pay a lot in taxes but they have wonderful health care, great mm, education, yeah. and they don't mind paying the taxes. But there was just a much more relaxed vibe. Even the style, everyone was just chill. 
Um, and even like you had pickpockets there, but you didn't really have violent crime or any of that stuff. It's just, it's, uh, and I think more people are, listen, we're always going to have the, the, pe- the people that want to be in the cities and they love the action. And I think especially young people, like young people coming to LA, like, or New York, like, okay, I get it. It's fun. But I'm always like, you know, when you start to hit around 30, 35, like, I don't know, maybe go back to, to nature and today where you can work online, but everyone's got their own right journey. But I do see, and I think you're going to see more people just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I st- again, I still think you have to be responsible. I still think that, you know, if whatever you want in life, it's not going to come easy. Look, if you want to clean up the oceans, that's not going to be easy. And if you want to build quilt, it's not going to be easy. Mm-mm. So the thing is, again, I think consumerism and capitalism like breeds this of like, I want all these big things, but then I don't want to do the work. And now I'm angry. I don't have those things. Mm. So I think there's a balance there. But I, again, I just think the overworking hurts. It doesn't pay, actually pay, it doesn't pay dividends. I actually argue that by doing, by taking your foot off the pedal you know, more will come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that you're seeing this getting back to, yeah, people just, uh, they're out. And I think also like managers, uh, you know, and bosses and which I've been saying for, with all, at least with my company, you know, we were doing stuff at after buzz. Uh, we are trying to answer this, but I, I think with companies like you just have to, you, you, Oh, people always say, how do you get such great people to like over the years to work for me? And I've been very blessed, as you can see with Kelsey and Pooja. Um, but I would say I was always trying to root for their success as much as my own, sometimes more, mm-hmm. well, actually always more. But even if you just, and I will tell managers that like, you have to be thinking you want, got to want them to win too. And I remember again, 20th century, I remember this one guy, his favorite time of the year, you guys was... <laughs> was the holidays. You know why? Because that's when bonus checks went out. And you know why? Because he was so excited to tell them the bonuses they weren't getting that they were expecting. This was his favorite time of the year. And I was like, oh my God, (laughs) this is what's out there. But you know, as the world, as that world is collapsing, Mm. we're seeing that guard collapse, but they're still out there. But but your generation's like, yeah, I'm out. I, you know, I'm out. You know, if you don't value me and see me for who I am, Mm. what's the point? Mm Mm-hmm. And I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, I love that. Wow. Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm. Mental Health Awareness Month. Kelsey. Pooji, yeah. you're in the booth. You're just too busy taking notes. <laughs> Pooji's probably so going to so no. Poo- no, so Pooji's, <laughs> uh, it's interesting. She's all Indian descent and um, has a great story too. And it's nice because Kelsey is millennial and she's more Gen Y. See. Z. Gen Z, excuse me. <laughs> Gen Y. It is works. there a Gen Y? Same is it thing. coming? I don't know. Gen Z. I don't think there's But, one but uh, Pooch, you know, how does all this stuff resonate with you? Are we from another planet? No, I think especially now with my generation, like you were saying, um, Ashley, with social media, it's mm. gotten really bad, like mm. really mm. bad. I think for us, the biggest thing is the comparison because mm. we see like the you know, the highlight reel of everyone's lives. And we're like, oh, how come it's not like that? Like, how come we can't, we can't be doing that? Mm -hmm. Um, Which is why I love Quilt because I'm on Quilt. And it, (laughs) it just, it's a nice space where there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's real, like no one's trying to front. Um, And I think we need more of that. Mm. We really do. Um, So saying that, yeah, yeah. it's, um, I appreciate hearing that. It's, um, about five years ago, I there were a lot of um, fires. You know, I mean, every year there are fires mm-hmm. in California and on our planet. And I was, I am new to California five years ago, right. and so I've been exposed to hurricanes and I've been exposed, you know, snowstorms and yeah, fires and earthquakes are our thing out here. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, yeah, not in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, or New York City. And I was like, and I remember seeing fires mm-hmm. like from Santa Monica, and I like, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. And I was living alone and I was feeling super overwhelmed and I started crying. And I had this thought because I was in my awakening. um, And uh, I was like, I wonder if other people are scared too. So I took a picture and I posted it on Instagram. Just, I really, like, I I don't know. It just, I felt inspired to like share this and I'm not, was not one to post often on, on Instagram. And then, you know, came back an hour later and 
people thought I was like, you know, mentally unwell. Posting a picture of no tears, it was, mm. is this a cry for help? Like, you know, it, it, like this emergency for me, not for the planet. Interesting. And all of a sudden I felt so like alone and like comparing myself because everybody else's pictures are happy, like you're saying. And I took it down and I just was like, I, mm. I guess this is not, this is not the place for that. Uh, and today, like whether it's, you know, Adele or Keith Love or, <laughs> you know, or, or somebody, you know, a musician with a song around crying, whatever it is, people are now publicly expressing their their pain on social media, trying, trying in the old paradigms, which are the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the Twitters of the world, trying to like shine through and share something that is authentic and that is real. Mm. I'm so excited about that. And I also, of course, I'm sitting here in the question mark of will those models on those platforms with those features really get us where we need to, or do we need to evolve that um, and not feel like we're going to compare I think ourselves? We need, I think we need to evolve as individuals. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. always going to have that stuff. But again, go back to wake up, like he had said, like Raheem said about coming out of our spells. Mm. That's education. Yeah. Right. And that's where we have to educate ourselves to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm not getting on Instagram today. I'm not, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or if I'm going on, it's for something yeah. else. You know, I think that's. Yeah. I mean, but I think that's what Quilt is doing. Bringing yeah. it back to that, not to just keep bringing it back to Quilt. But I think that, <laughs> no, but I think that these are the places that you can be safe and have these discussions and educate yourself. So then you can start educating your children. It is important to uh, learn, you know, I mean, obviously I'm a big fan of quilts, so come there. Um, <laughs> but the other thing I'll sometimes do is just follow Brahim on Twitter. <laughs> um, I've never really been into like the, the, the Twitter landscape before. It's yeah, not something, I think it's the, it's I personally think it's the darkest of all of I them. I think it's, yeah. I do think it's the darkest of yeah. all of them. Um, yeah, I'm off. I don't go near it. And, but I, but I will say that like, by doing all of my social media exploration, getting to know Brahim, who he has such a, a strong and kind of consistent voice on Twitter, raising awareness, like mm. in the space that might be the most toxic, like shedding light on what is happening in the fashion industry, in the crypto space, you know, on mm. climate, with our education systems and our political systems, like on Quilt, we don't really go into, it's like Quilt is not a political place. You know, people show up, they have all different backgrounds, they may have different belief systems, but we come in, there's like a shared desire for kindness and to care for one another. And so it's really not a, ju a judgmental environment, but the world we're in is a judgmental space. It's, it's, oh, so yeah. Gabby Bernstein, you must know yeah, Gabby, but Gabby's yeah. that judgment detox. And yeah. I, oh, again, I, that's my tool in my brain to go yeah. back to when I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm like, God, yeah. judgment detox, you know, stop judging because you don't know anyone else's story. You really don't. You know, but yeah, it's but so it's educate. nice that Quilt doesn't have that. It's nice. I feel like with the Heel Squad here, we don't have it either, mm -hmm. but there's so much like judgment, 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 ju you know, everybody is better than everyone else. And then, you know, we, we just, and I can speak because I'm an American, but like, it seems like the American culture is like, I just have to win. Mm -hmm. I got to get the last word in. Mm -hmm. I'll die to be right. Mm -hmm. Or, or, rather than listen to the other side. But I like the, I think, feel like, Brahim, the way you're coming at people, it's a lot more educational and less judgmental. And that's the key. Because I would say, go back to education. Yeah, All those yeah. liberal principles that, again, I laughed at, like when I, or just like just shrug my shoulders, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I realized it really is about education. Mm -hmm. If we, you know, if we just educate one another and have empathy, mm -hmm. things would, you know. So when you hear, when you hear your story, like, wait. Why would I want to? Why wouldn't I want to support an ocean that is vibrant compared to one with bottles and cans that clearly is doing damage to everybody? But when we hear it, but then when it comes off in a judgmental tone, the people who put it out in a judgmental way that gets the reaction from the masses to be angry and go, "No, it's uh, climate change is fake," and, and now right. here we go. But if you come at it from just like, well, you know, these are just from facts and I, I kind of want to do something better mm -hmm. for the world. And then he's like, oh, huh. Yeah. You know, I feel like it's a lot more disarming and again, a better way to educate. Hey, Heel Squad, that concludes part one of our interview with Quilts, Ashley and Brahim. Uh, please, please like and subscribe if you'd be so kind. Leave us some comments. And uh, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, well, be sure to give us a nice five-star rating yes. and some comments as well. 
and be sure to tune into part two. Much more great information and takeaway. See you then.